Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. We try to make sense of this crazy Arizona market. And if your home is up for sale or you're thinking of selling it, there are some forward looking indicators that you need to start paying attention to. And I'm gonna go through them here one by one and tell you what they mean and tell you what you need to be on the lookout for. Now is not the time to go in not prepared. Does that make sense? You need to see what's going on. So when somebody comes up and says, Give me 15 minutes and I'll give you the price of your home. Yeah, I want to caution you on that. That needs to be a collaborative discussion. If somebody's going to tell me the price of my home, I want to see the data that you looked at. I want to see why you arrived at that conclusion. I want, want to know why you're so confident I can get that price. Because remember, the sales price is dictated by what people are willing to pay for your home, the market. And when things are really aggressive and we're really in short supply, they're going to surprise you. They're going to offer you more than your listing price. You came up with a price, but there's 30 people that want your home and yours is the only one in the neighborhood. Well, then you're going to get more. But now if there's 30 homes and only three people looking, you're going to get far less. That is the market. It's not the price that is set by the real estate agent. Now, having said that, what are some of these numbers that we're looking at that's making us go, ooh, this is going to be an interesting summer. Well, one of the ones that's turning right now is called the listing success rate. And you can see here, it's still really good. It's just a little bit below 90, which means 90% of you are getting what you're asking for for your home. Now, let me clarify what a listing success rate is. That means the final price you decided on. So if you've shot for the moon and you went too high and you're asking, I'm just going to make up a number, $700,000, and it sat there and you had to pull it back to 650 and it finally sold at 650 that means you successfully sold it for your listing price you didn't successfully sell it on your original asking price so even though you brought your listing price down and then it finally went under contract that's considered successful but there are some people that are putting their homes on the market and they're just staying stuck on their price that's my price i'm not moving that's not a good move if you really want to sell your house and you're not getting a lot of activity People aren't looking at it. Nobody's giving you offers. Now, the worst thing you can do is fold, fold your arms and wait because uh, you're just not going to get the price. And if you don't think it's price, then mark the house down to $250,000 and see how long it sits there. <laughs> You'll get an offer real quick. So it's always price. Now, real estate agents also can't call a buyer's agent and convince them that the house is right for their client. So let's say somebody comes in and they don't like your kitchen. They just don't like the layout. Um, there's nothing you can do about that. You can't call the buyer's agent and go, well, let me tell you why that kitchen layout's actually really good. They're not going to care. They just don't like that kitchen. They're going to go get something else. So don't waste your time on why people don't want your house because it doesn't have a pool or they don't like the kitchen layout or they wish the bedroom was different. Don't waste your time on the negative buyers that don't want your home. Concentrate on the appearance of your home and the price. Because this listing success rate here, I got it pushed the wrong button there. There we go. It's starting to come down. And here the green number there is 2005 numbers. And look how fast it started going down. And what the Cromford people are saying, at this moment, we're just under 90%, which is a very strong number. However, if we look at the last five weeks, a clear weakening trend has started. A similar trend developed in 2005 between June and July. By the end of 2005, we were down to just 63%, meaning that one in three homes listed failed to sell. Well, that's pretty aggressive. We cannot say this will happen in 2022, but if it were going to happen, the first signs of the success rate problem would look just like the chart above. So if this were to happen, this is what it would look like. If this keeps going down here, you need to pay attention. So it's going to be harder and harder to sell your home. This one is more interesting. Now, where do you get access to this data? That's a tough one to tell. I tried looking. I'm going to talk about this one in just a moment here. When I go to Redfin or Realtor.com, the numbers that they're showing you right now are April. And it's, you know, the end of May right now. So this is current data. And uh, they do have um, data that you can buy called Cromford Public. But most people don't want to shell that out on a monthly basis or a quarterly basis to see those kind of numbers. But uh, list price versus sales price per square foot. Obviously, it's gone up. But the green line is the average list pr price uh, 
contract price, you know, what it sold for. Notice how the green line was trending above the blue line, which meant people were asking this, but they were getting this. And that was going on for quite some time. The green people were getting above their list price. Well, now it's merged and now it's going the other direction. In other words, the list price, instead of the list price being below and the sales price being above, it's inverted. Not by much, but that's where it's trending. So people are starting to not get their list price. And people are reducing their prices at a rapid scale. Look at this. That line on the right, on the right hand side showing that 1,496 listings changed their list price. And they usually don't change them to go higher. They change them and go lower. So that's price changes per week. And that follows what I'm seeing when I track the seven-day moving average. And here is where we are today with actual active listings on the market. Now, we were watching this closely to see if we would have the same jump that we had last week or week before. And indeed, we did. It was within about 50 homes. So we went from 65, 22 to 73, and then from 73 to 81. So it's pretty close. Uh, so uh, the number of listings that are active are, um, are growing considerably, and you get a lot more choices. Now, is this doom and gloom? Does this mean houses aren't selling? No, it's still pretty brisk. Um, it's, uh, I did an open house this weekend. Had some pretty good, pretty good traffic. Not the kind of traffic that we would have seen a few months ago. Uh, but there's people out there, and they're shopping, and they're buying. And, uh, and if you're going to list your home, you'll, you'll find a buyer but you've got to be smart about it. So now is not the time. And looking forward now is not the time to say, I'm going to really try to squeeze out the top dollar for this home. So you need to price it in a range. When you look at the home and you say, well, it's worth, smack my mic there, it's worth between here and here. Don't price at the top because we have more inventory coming. The listing success rate is dropping. The number of homes that are selling over list is coming down from where it was. And so the odds of you getting that list price is starting to get slimmer and slimmer by the day. And when will this all start to even out? Well, at the current rate, probably by August. If all of these numbers that I showed you continue the same trajectory, the success rate coming down, the number of active listings coming up. You know, there's a lot of headwinds out there right now. The three things that matter most to us, which is fuel, food, and housing, are all out of control. Food is uh, starting to get incredibly expensive and in short supply. Fuel, don't even get me started. We're almost at $5.50 a gallon. And housing is expensive. So they won't stay there forever. Now, is there going to be a crash? Well, based on what we're looking at, and remember, this is always going to be opinion. But the comment here by Cromford, I agree with him. So the problem that we faced in 2006 was compounded by all the foreclosures that piled up in 2007. This was largely because so many homeowners had little or no equity in 2006. And remember then in 2006, we had inventories of like 60,000 homes. So by 2007, they had negative equity, no reason to avoid foreclosure. They owed more than what the house was worth. So they said, well, I'm just going to let the bank take it. And they let the bank take it because their loan shifted, went from a interest-only loan to a higher rate of about 65 to 7%. They couldn't afford the payments. At the moment, we have a more positive situation with much higher percentage of homeowners having significant equity. They should be motivated to protect rather than abandon that equity. That gives us reason to be less worried. But extreme vigilance is the order of the day for those who refinanced and took out too much cash over the last two years, better be careful. So there's a lot of equity out there still, but if you refinanced and you pulled that equity out, then you know be careful. You gotta stay aware of the numbers. And we do that here. So be sure and hit that like button and hit, click subscribe and hit that bell notification so that you know whenever I update these numbers. But it's gonna be a very interesting summer and if you're thinking of listing, watch these numbers carefully. You can still get close to your asking price now or above your asking price. It's changed a little, but it looks like it's going to get harder and harder going forward. Hope that helps. Have a great day.